In the evening, Marina called her new friend Varia. What are your plans for your day off? Let's go to the park with the boys. They'll get all their energy out on the playgrounds, and we'll just sit and relax. What do you think of that? Oh, I took work home. Reports are coming in. The boss is ranting and raving. I was going to drop Igor off and work for my parents. I'll think about it. Maybe I can get a couple of hours off. I'll call you in the morning, Varia answered. Marina did not actually plan to make new friends. She had had a loyal friend Lieska since she was a child. Only now Lieska lived far away with her husband Summeriner, and they communicate mainly over the phone. Marina met Varia not long ago in the children's polyclinic. Marina brought her sickly six-year-old son Alyeshka to the clinic. She realized at first glance that she would not be able to make it by the time indicated on the coupon. Patients messed up the entire schedule. Someone was constantly rushing into the office just to ask. Someone was escorted out of turn. In a word, everything was as usual. Marina sat and watched her son. Ilyeshka was animatedly talking to the red-headed boy about something. The boy's mother was sitting next to him. Marina immediately noticed her. The woman was about her age, but all kind of tired, faded, shoulders slumped, a poker face, not a bit of makeup on her face, her hair of an unknown color gathered in a dull ponytail at the back of her head. They met. The woman's name was Varia. Are you not feeling well too? Marina asked sympathetically. No, my health is normal. I am just tired. I am tired of such a life and most of all of having no money. I am a single mother. My son is six years old. I work like a dray horse. I take part-time jobs to have at least some money for a rainy day, but I still do not have enough money, said Varia. She did not finish. Their turn came up and Varia and her son went into the office. After them, Marina and Elyeshka went to the doctor's office. They would never cross paths again, but suddenly it started to rain. Marina noticed Varia and her son at the exit. They stood and waited out the rain, which poured on and on. It turned out that their houses were almost next door to each other. Marina offered to call a cab. Varia hesitated, it's expensive. I'll pay for it, Marina promised. The next day they met at the playground again. It was Saturday, no need to go to work. Marina was sitting on a bench when Varia and her son appeared. The boys went about their business. Varia again began to complain about life. We split up with her husband two years ago. He does not pay alimony because he does not work anywhere. My ex lives with my mother. He rarely visits his son. At best, he can bring a toy he stole from a machine or a chocolate bar. He can't understand that the child requires a lot of expenses. Igor attends paid activities, preparation for school is also paid, and he is also engaged in music school. A child needs to be comprehensively developed, otherwise you can't survive in our world today. I had to take out a loan so that my son does not feel defective. My salary is small, so I take part-time jobs. I work at the computer at home until very late at night. I don't get enough sleep all the time, and I go to work like a wreck. It is good that my parents sometimes give me some money, but they are pensioners and cannot give much. They take their grandson with them, if I am completely swamped with work. My mother also has health problems. It's good that I have my own apartment, left by my grandmother, because I couldn't afford renting one. There is no personal life and is not planned. Who needs a hunted horse when there are so many young and beautiful people around? I'm sorry I told you everything, I just wanted to talk. Varia was embarrassed. Oh my friend, you need to pull you out of depression, responded to her Marina and smiled, and then she continued. Do you think you're alone like this? Yes, there are a lot of us, and a lot of us. In my opinion, you just put down the oars and swim with the current. Why haven't you filed for alimony? Husband doesn't work anywhere? They'll make him work. He has some income. I don't think he's completely on his mother's back, although anything's possible. Why are you working for a small salary? We live in the city. 
I understand you have a college degree, you could look for another job. What? How far is it? Are you used to working here too? But then bear it if you don't want to change your life for the better. You know, I'm a single mother too. Only I've never been married. Our biological father disappeared into thin air as soon as he found out I was pregnant. I didn't go looking for him, why should I? I only have my mother, she's also a retired woman. My son and I moved in with her when Ilyushka was a year and a half old. I decided that my mother deserved a quiet life. I don't expect any financial help from her, on the contrary, I try to help her. I rarely ask her to look after my grandson, in very extreme cases. My child takes free classes, and I prepare him for school myself, there's nothing difficult about it. My salary is higher than yours. I also take part-time jobs, but I try not to force myself. We eat well, and we are well-dressed and shabby. I try to spend more time with my son, but I also do not forget myself. Obligatorily once a month the hairdresser. I learned how to do my own manicure and pedicure. I have a small exerciser at home to support my figure. I even save money for a savings account, saving up for a down payment. I can't live in a rented apartment. Most importantly, I don't feel sorry for myself. I chose this life and I'm living it. I just try to look for the good in everything and not dwell on the bad. You too need to stop feeling sorry for yourself and tune into the positive. Marina decided to take over Varia. Maybe she needs support to believe in herself, in her strength. She constantly tried to take her out to the movies, for a walk, to a children's theater. On another visit to the barbershop, Marina also took Varia. True, she had to lend her money, but she was happy with the result. Varia got a beautiful haircut and dyed her hair. That is where everything came to a standstill. Varia was hard to move. She constantly had some unfinished work to do. It was urgent to take her son to school music, preparatory classes. Marina fought, fought, and slowly began to retreat. She realized that Varia sluggish and unnecessary person. In addition, Varia accepted the role of the victim and feels great in this role. In the morning, Varia called back and asked not to wait for them. They will not go to the park. She has work, and Igor's mother took him to her place. Do as you please. I do not want to bother you anymore, said an offended Marina. That would be wonderful. I've been meaning to tell you for a long time that you and I are too different. And we have different ways, responded Varia. Marina left Varia alone. One day she saw her as she walked past the playground. Varia was sitting on a bench with a young woman, her back to Marina. Igor was swinging on the swings. I'm so tired, I'm the only one bringing up the child, working like a workhorse for a penny. Marina did not listen any further, she had heard it all before. Marina silently turned around and walked in the other direction. She and Varia really have different roads. Subscribe to our channel not to miss new interesting life stories. Give us your likes, write your opinion in the comments.